I'm going to talk about spectrum right now. Let me preface it by saying there are two camps when it comes to spectrum. There are those of us who believe that it is a finite resource. There is a, there is a truism. We cannot invent any more spectrum. There is no more spectrum to be had. That's all we have. It's all we're going to get. We can use it more efficiently. We can use it better, and we are. But there's another camp over here that's called the cognitive radio or software-defined radio group who believes that if we make radios smart enough, we will have unlimited bandwidth and unlimited spectrum because the radios will be smart enough to figure out when a piece of spectrum is available for use. We don't have enough wireless spectrum to take everything that's wired and move it wirelessly. It's not possible, no matter what the technology. So let's look at the United States. The first cellular channels were on 850, 850 megahertz, and there are two bands. There was an A band and a B band, and it's important to understand that it's different from today's WiMAX. Cellular, the base station transmits on one frequency and the mobiles transmit on another. Now this is important because what it means is I can build a cell site and my transmitters all are on one frequency and my receivers are down here on a different frequency so my interference between transmitter and receiver is really limited. They, had, they opened the PCS system in 1996 because we needed more competition and again it split the same way. In Europe they have different spectrum. They have 900 megahertz, 1800 and 2.1. The big difference between Europe and the United States is the United States does not say in this band of spectrum you must put this technology. They say in this band of spectrum you can put any technology you want. What Europe says is in 900 megahertz, you can only put GSM. In 2.1, you can only put UMTS. In 1800, you can only put GSM. Now, they're starting to allow the operators to go back to 900 and put in UMTS or 3G networks because the difference in the number of cell sites needed between 900 and 2100 is enormous. It's about a 5 to 1 ratio. So for every cell site I build on 900, I would have to build 5 at 2.1 to get the same coverage. Because of the frequency bands, the higher you go in frequency, the less coverage you have per cell site. FCC auctioned off what they called AWS, Advanced Wireless Service Spectrum in August and September of 2006. Now this spectrum is made up of part military, part commercial, and people have to be moved off of it to higher spectrum before it's really available. But again, it transmits base station on one portion of the spectrum and receives on another. There were 104 winning bidders, 35 licenses were not purchased and were still held. That means nobody wanted that particular part of the country. Nobody but T-Mobile has really stood up and said what they're going to do with the spectrum. AT&T bought a little bit of it, Verizon bought a little bit of it, so it'll get added to those networks. But there are some people who bought it and have not declared what they're going to do with it yet. It's not going to be available for a couple of years, so nobody's in a hurry except T-Mobile is clearing everybody so they can get into the 3G business. 700 megahertz. It's presently used by TV channels that will be moved lower in the spectrum. It's perceived as the most valuable spectrum available ever auctioned because it covers larger distances than anything we now have for commercial services. It penetrates buildings and foliage well. It's close enough to existing wireless spectrum to be incorporated into wireless devices. This is spectrum that is going to be fought over hard and it's going to be fought over hard, not just by incumbents, but other people. And right now, as it's set, one portion of this spectrum is set to be quote-unquote open access, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, and another portion of it is an experiment that is a combination 
private sector, public safety, first responder combined network.